Mike Mentzer's hit exercise video was filmed on Saturday, June 9th, 2001, exactly 24 hours prior to his passing. In some respects, it's an incomplete video. Undoubtedly, pickup shots would have been filmed, other shots that were taken would have been discarded, and Mike would have narrated it where appropriate. With his death the next day, the production was thrown into disarray. The co-producer, Val Siegel, had shot raw footage, but Mike was no longer around to help complete the project. As a result, he simply released it as it was shot, adding music and having the opening narration voiced by Shelley Andrews, who was both Val's and Mike's accountant and who it was believed sounded like Mike. The video was very successful and showed those interested in high-intensity training what Mike's method was all about. It's a great historical piece and also revealed an authenticity lacking in most exercise videos as the trainee in the video, Marcus Reinhardt, was put through a real high-intensity workout. Indeed, Marcus was put through three such workouts on the same day to save on having to book and pay for time over a five-week period. What's interesting is that in the days prior to his passing, Mike sent me the script he had written for the video. The script revealed what he envisioned the video to be and what content he wished to have in it. At the time of his passing, he had only completed writing out the first two workouts to be filmed. However, as there are differences between what he wrote and what was shot on June 9, 2001, I thought I would share with you his original script, such as it is, and cut the video that was shot to match his original vision. We don't have Mike's narration, unfortunately, so the viewer will have to make do with yours truly. The video would begin with a cutaway of Mike posing on the beach for approximately 30 seconds. and then Marcus posing for 30 seconds. With flourishes back and forth, perhaps even still photos. Marcus hitting a few poses, then Mike, then Marcus, then Mike, and then that's it. The voiceover was as follows. The average bodybuilder, from the moment he walks through the gym door, goes through his workout and then leaves, does practically everything wrong. First, he starts fraternizing, which only serves to divert him from the proper mindset, one in which his focus is actively, purposefully directed to what he should be doing to achieve his goal. Instead of checking his progress chart to discover what he did last workout, and then spend some time alone psyching up for the very intense activity to follow, the average bodybuilder fritters away his time and focus socializing. Notice that Marcus confidently saunters in and properly says hello to a few friends, but he doesn't waste time conversing endlessly. He then heads right for the men's room to change. Whereupon he emerges and sits down with me, to go over his records so he has a goal to shoot for, namely, to perform this workout with either heavier weights, more reps, or both than last workout for the same exercises. Notice, too, that he wastes no time stretching or performing aerobics. You're wasting your time and recovery ability by stretching. You will maintain or even increase your flexibility by performing all of your weight resistance exercises through a full range of motion. Mike indicated in the script that at this point we might cut away to an exercise showing Marcus doing an exercise for one rep or two through a full range of motion. And as for aerobics, it's not just a waste of time, it's counterproductive, and it uses up a sizable portion of the body's limited reserve of resources known as recovery ability, which could be used for growth. Warming up is imperative. I want the beginner to be especially aware of this. You always warm up before your exercises. In this case, Marcus is going to do a warm-up on the incline press. Generally, we have him do three warm-ups, a very light one just to get the blood flowing, then we move to a moderate weight to set him up neuromuscularly, and then the heavy one to get him ready for the big set that comes later. 
All right, Marcus, let's get a light warm-up. We'll help you. Now remember, a slow cadence is very important. Once one has properly performed the positive aspect of the rep, taking four seconds in most exercises, he should then work his static strength by holding the resistance two to three seconds, then work the negative by lowering in four seconds. Studies conducted with a bodybuilder standing on a force plate who jerks the bar to get it started and relies on momentum to finish the rep only applies resistance to the muscle at the start of the movement and at the end. For full, complete development of one's size and strength, it is imperative that he lifts, holds, and lowers the resistance under strict control. The best cadence for eliminating momentum is four seconds or so lifting the weight or moving against the resistance, three seconds statically holding the contracted position, and four seconds lowering the weight. There is no magic number of seconds up and down, such as the ridiculously slow 10-10 cadences, as zealously advocated by some. Now we're back to Marcus and I finishing our talk, and then getting up to head for the first exercise. I say, okay Marcus, this isn't just another workout, it is the workout. Let's warm you up on the incline press, then set the weight so you can move from the first exercise of the superset, the pec deck, right to the incline with no waiting. The shoulders and triceps warmed up and the weight ready. This Marcus and I do, him performing with a light weight, then a moderate to heavy one. With that, he shakes his arms and says, Okay, Mike, I'm ready to destroy the weights. I really psyched up last night before bed and I'm raring to go. Then Marcus and Mike head to the pec deck where Marcus uses the 4-3-4 cadence that I'll be barking about. Mike Menser says, Okay, this is the real deal. Take a deep breath, set yourself psychologically, and go. Remember the rep cadence. 1001, start. All right, Dev, you didn't get a full stretch in the back. We want you to go from full extension, which means when the muscle is extended, literally. See the muscle extending? All right, now up slowly. 1,001, see you throw it. 1,003, that's better. 1,004, 1,005, hold it. 1,001, 1,002, okay, go back. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. 1,004, okay, 1,005, I'd rather, rather have you do five seconds than three seconds. Getting real hard. All right, well, if necessary, we'll have Ray assist you on our rep or two, but not yet. Very good, perfect cadence. There's no momentum involved. Look at the intensity on his face. He's totally absorbed in what he's doing, which is the only way you're gonna become a physique champion or achieve your personal goals. Come on, Marcus, I love this. I love to see people work out like this, motivated, going to failure. Come on. Come on. Whoa. All right, let's have Ray move in and perhaps assist you on this next rep. Good. Slow. Work the negative. I got another one. I got another one. All right. Remember, you have three levels of strength. The positive, which is the lifting and the weakest. The static or the holding, which is stronger than the positive. And then the negative. Bring him all the way, just bring him all the way in and watch. Oh, now pull it there. You see, he couldn't lift it. Oh. He couldn't lift it, now he's holding it very easily. The static is much stronger than the positive or lefty. Now show him the negative, how, how easier that is even. Remember, you've got three levels of strength. The positive or lifting, the static, which is the holding, and the negative, which is the lowering, and the strongest. Look at that. He couldn't complete a positive rep but he held it easy and he's lowering it even easier still. Marcus proceeds slowly through the set I give him and to positive failure only. Then he literally runs to the incline press, which he does in rest pause style. I help him to the top position with a heavy weight, urge him on with a motivational pitch, then ask him if he's counting four up and four down. Whereupon I explain that there is a lockout in the contracted position, therefore, little in the way of meaningful resistance, so there's no use for a static hold on this exercise. Just a deep breath and continue, which means he takes his hands off the bar, I reduce the weight, 
Marcus counts out loud to seven, to ten, then does another single maximum rep. You're getting me striped up. Go down slow, work all three levels of ability. Positive, static, very good. Okay, let it down. He then pauses again. I also explain that, as Marcus did with the pec deck, all the beginner and those just entering the intermediate stage has to do is just go to normal positive failure for two to four reps in the incline press where you can't do another full range rep and stop. Later, I'll show advanced bodybuilders how to make the workout a bit more intense, but going to positive failure is always okay. And viewer, if you're going to try rest pause, Limit it to one exercise per workout and be sure to watch how it affects your strength by keeping tabs on your training journal. That is a crucially important item, by the way. If you don't have one, run out after this tape and buy yourself a cheap $1.69 loose leaf notebook. Bring it with you to the gym each and every workout. At the top left, please record the date. That's very important for keeping track of your workouts. At the top right, record your body weight. Then, of course, you list the name of the exercises, list the weights, and be careful on this last point, accurately record the number of reps, as even a one rep increase can prove significant under certain circumstances. One important note before we move on. You should grow stronger on every set of every workout, or almost. If you're not gaining any weight after two to three weeks, then I strongly suggest you read and reread Chapter 6 of Heavy Duty 2, Mind and Body, entitled, interestingly enough, Serving the Needs of the Growth Mechanism. Once he's finished, I urge Marcus to rest slightly, which means get some water, walk around for a moment or two, then demonstrate for the viewers who haven't got a pec deck to observe Marcus perform dumbbell flies in the proper form with a heavy weight. At this point, Marcus will be shown either walking to the weights or already there, whereupon he describes the movement. Then cut away to a commercial. This tape has been brought to you by Jen, with Marcus adding the rest. It should be a minute's worth of tape time. Then cut away to Dorian's testimonial. At this juncture, Marcus and Mike are talking about what a great set it was, at which point Marcus goes to the mirror takes off his tank top and does a minute or so of posing, mostly showing his pecs. I stand by and banter with Marcus, asking him to do different poses, all the while marveling at his physique. This should be brief. Now Marcus and Mike move to the back. They move to the pull-down machine where Marcus does a warm-up with a moderate weight. I mention that Marcus has an equidistant hand grip, which the tape shows. And I mentioned that since Marcus has finished his chest, he is not only warmed up, his body is hot. Therefore, he does but a brief warm-up of three to four reps with a moderate weight. Then he starts the exercise with me goading him on and counting the number of seconds up and down. That's good. That's failure. A lot of people are confused about what it means to train to failure. Training to failure means you train to the point where you can't do one more full range positive rep in proper form despite your greatest effort. That was excellent. Very good. A plus. When he's finished, we'll give the viewers a special look at how much stronger the static and negative reps are. I'll put a weight on he can't budge. Then I'll assist him into the contracted position where he'll hold it five seconds, where I say, see? He couldn't budge the weight for even a single positive, but can hold it statically rather easily in the contracted position and lowers it, that is, does the negative, even easier. 
I then say, you see, you are not a weightlifter per se, and by that I mean your goal isn't to hoist the heaviest possible weights. No, you're a bodybuilder, which means your purpose is to literally, not just to stimulate growth in a given muscle, but also to turn on the body's growth mechanism. Some of you viewing may recall the concept indirect effect, which means when you stimulate growth in any muscle, you also stimulate growth through the rest of the body, though to a lesser degree. And the bigger the muscle you're working, the greater the indirect effect. Growth is best stimulated by working all three levels of ability, the positive, the static, and the negative. And once again, the greatest overall growth stimulators are the exercises that stimulate the greatest growth. The best exercise, in fact, for turning on the body's growth mechanism is the next exercise, the deadlift. While I'm saying this, Marcus has shown warming up on the deadlift, 135 pounds for seven reps, 225 pounds for four, then 315 for two. At this point, I enter the picture and instruct Marcus through the deadlift. To conclude, I'll state, I hope you observe that Marcus did three warm-ups, one with a light weight to get the blood moving into the back, then a moderate weight for four reps, but well shy of failure, while still requiring some effort, and concluded with 315 pounds, a heavy weight. The reason for the extensive warm-up again has to do with the lower back being more vulnerable than most other areas. This concludes the first workout. Then and at, with my books and audios and videos on the table, I say, Heavy Duty has been known for years as the leader with regards to a scientific approach, it representing the one and only possible valid theory of scientific exercise. If you want to learn more about these products, log in at www.mikemenser.com. And for those interested in fully personalized phone consultations with Mike, call, and then he lists his number. Now workout number two. Mike. Just as we did with the pec deck supersetted with the incline press, with this leg workout, Marcus will start his warm-up with the second exercise, the compound movement or leg press, meaning it involves more than one muscle. Like the pecs with the incline press, or here again, the leg press. Marcus does three warm-ups, light, intermediate, heavy. He then shakes his hands, makes a remark, and we head to the leg extension, where Marcus gets on, then I set the weight, remarking, the legs have been shown empirically, that is, through observation, to respond better with higher reps, 8 to 15, with my preferring closer to 15. Let's see how close I hit the mark in setting the weight. Okay, Marcus, it's 4 to 5 seconds up for legs, a long 3 seconds static hold, and yes, lower in 4 to 5 seconds. Under. You've had six days to rest up. That's quite a bit, although not necessarily adequate. We don't know that. That's why we keep a, a progress chart. If you're not getting stronger at your workout, we may have to reduce your training frequency from once every six days to once every seven, eight, nine, or even 10, as we have some clients doing. Get the top, both we do have clients five, training six. once every seven, ah! 14 days. Very good. I know that hurt. Ah, it's not. It's not indicative ah. of an injury. That's lactic acid. Ah. Come on, try one more. Keep going. Come on, man, push it. Push. Ah. Okay, group now. One big up. Ah. No. Ah. Yeah. Oh, it's ah. good. Go right away. Now Marcus literally runs over to the leg press where he counts, then I count, then together the number of seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and so forth, until he hits failure. You got the whole thing. Come all the way back and don't stop and get right out. Come on. Stop. You shouldn't be not okay. Marcus will get up breathing heavily, whereupon I say, those who think heavy duty is for sissies should go through a thigh workout like the one Marcus just completed. 
Marcus, take a breath, get some water, and I'll meet you at the leg curl machine. Cut away to Greg Anderson's tape, or save her after the leg workout. Marcus goes right into the leg curl and audibly counts his reps while I talk. Marcus's hamstrings are already warmed up from the leg press, so he forgoes any warm-up and proceeds as fast as he can without overdoing it and overwhelming his physiology till he's sick. Beginner should start suggested routine number one with as much rest between exercises as he needs, even the supersets. As time goes on, make every effort to methodically pick up the pace of the workout until you are all but running through the whole thing. But again, be careful. Don't overdo. If you don't heed my advice and attempt to go through any of the workouts non-stop, you'll know why Mike Menser was so emphatic. Mike. Okay, Marcus, that didn't tire you out. Walk to the calf machine, take a few deep breaths, and go right away. Your calves are not just warmed up, they're hot from the leg presses and curls. Here the camera starts with a full body shot, showing how Marcus gets into the machine and does a few reps, then close-ups to show Marcus's magnificent calves. All the while, I'm saying, notice how Marcus entered the machine, with shoulders up under the pads. Then he carefully sets his feet onto the toe board, stands up straight with knees locked, and aims for 12 to 20 reps. That's right, Marcus, a slow, steady, even cadence, only three to four seconds up. Three is okay here because of the much lesser range of motion when performing the standing calf raise. All right, hold it at the top, and when you think you can't go any higher, give it a slight hitch and move it another half inch higher. All right, you can't budge another rep in proper form, so you hit failure. Finished. Upon conclusion, Marcus states, I'm glad we have six days till the next workout. Man, I'm shot. Commercial for Muscle Mag International. Workout number three. Mike, Marcus, since the vast majority of those viewing don't have access to a shoulder lateral machine, we'll do dumbbell laterals. The first exercise and then give a brief demonstration on how to properly use a shoulder machine. Unfortunately, this was as far in the script as he got, or at least as far as he got at the time he sent it to me. Still, it's an interesting bit of Mike Menser history, and you can see that the video, as it was shot that day in 2001, is different in many respects from how Mike had originally scripted it. The link for the video as it ended up being shot appears on the screen now. In any event, I hope you found this interesting.